On this episode of Bloom with a Classic, we're checking and setting ignition timing on a Jaguar V12. Welcome back to Loom with a Classic and part two of how to tune a Jaguar V12. If you're new to my channel, I highly recommend that you subscribe. I put out new videos every week on the white XJ12 there in the background, an XJS convertible and an S-Type project car that you'll be seeing a lot of very shortly. So just go down to my profile down below. You can see all these videos on these cars. There's almost 40 of them right now. And while you're down there, you can hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any updates from the channel. In part one in this mini series, we went through setting the throttle bodies, setting the throttle discs correctly, making sure that they open at the same time, and setting the rods, making sure that they're the same length. If you missed this video, it's a really important step in tuning these cars. I'll put a link to it right up here. I'll also put a link in the description down below. You can check it out after this video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to check and set ignition timing on these V12s also how to go through your distributor and make sure that everything is working well. I'll be doing it all with the distributor in the car. It'll be in another video where I'll take the distributor out and show you how to go through it if you find that things are broken. But in this video, I will just show you how to check everything and then how to set ignition timing. If I put both things in this video, it will be a very long video. So it will be a future video of taking the distributor out and how to go through the advanced weights on the bench because I don't recommend doing that in the car at all because it's right there in the middle. You might drop things. It's just a lot easier to pull it out and do it on the bench. When setting ignition timing though, you need to have one of these, some type of strobe gun. Uh, this is a pretty simple one. It does however have a dial for setting degrees on the back and I think this is something that is a must when working on these cars. I'll see if I can find some links to good ones online. I bought this one on Amazon a few years ago, so I'll see if I can find the same one or a similar one, and I'll put a link down below to it. I've been really happy with this one at least. So let's head on over to the car, and I'll show you what to look out for, how to dismantle different parts of the distributor while it's on the car, and how to check ignition timing. So here we are in the middle of the engine bay of my XJ12. It's a 1977, which means it's a pre-HE, which also means I have an Opus ignition system. Here is the control box for it right down here. But don't worry, I will also be showing how to do this on an HE car. I will be showing everything on this car because the XJS actually uses a completely different ignition system called Magneti Marinelli, which you don't set up in any way like this. The ignition timing is done by the computer on those cars. But on these cars, it's done with advanced weights and you actually physically need to set the ignition timing. So I will be showing how to do it on these early Opus systems and I will also be telling you how to do it on a HE engine that uses the Lucas. So now I'm going to remove a few parts just to make everything a lot easier to show. I'll remove the distributor cap and I'll also remove the coil out of the way here so we can see a lot more what I'm doing. So I'll be right back when I've removed those parts. All right, I removed everything so I can show it a lot easier now. Here is a top tip. When you remove all the HT leads, you don't need to mark all of them. Just mark 1A on the cap. So I put some tape on here. It's just normal masking tape on 1A. So then when I put everything back on, I start with 1A on there. And then I'll continue in the correct sequence. I can put that sequence in the description down below if you need it. Because you can easily tell where all the plug leads are coming from. And then you just put it on in the right order. But now let's set this to the side. And we'll have a look inside the distributor. This is a pre-HE like I mentioned, so it has a trigger board right there for the fuel injection. It also has a sensor right there and a ring for the Opus um, ignition over here. But the inside of the distributor looks really similar in the HE, is you still have a flash shield there instead of all these parts. And if you haven't had your distributor part, of course, you can check the inside of your cap. Make sure that all the connections are looking good and it's not cracked or falling apart. So get a new cap if this one looks bad, cracked, or maybe starts falling apart. You can also check that the rotor arm is not seized. It should be able to spring back like that. It's not the perfect way to check that the advanced weights are working, but you can at least check that it's not seized. 
while you're in here, you can also check that the vacuum is working. I've just hooked up a simple vacuum tester right here and you can pull a vacuum and see, there you see that it moves. And you can check that it holds vacuum. Of course, you can see that it moves just by um, pulling a vacuum with your mouth on it. But having a tester like that is a lot better. If any of those parts are faulty, the vacuum advance can be removed with everything in the car. And you can replace that. If the weights are seized, then that needs to be serviced out of the car. But I'll show you how to do that in a future video when I take out the distributor and service that. So now I'm going to put everything back together and I'll show you how to set the timing. These engines are timed on the first cylinder on the A bank. So 1A, that's this one over here. Grab the sensing part of your timing light. Hook it up like there on 1A. You also need to disconnect the vacuum advance. It's right over here. Uh, you can also choose to disconnect it up here. So what I usually do, it's a little easier. Make sure that you've hooked up the positive and the negative terminals to your timing light. Make sure that all the cables are out of the way so that nothing goes into any of the belts or the fan up here. Also, it's a good idea to check that you have a good screwdriver that fits down here. It's really hard to see, but right down there is a tiny, right there is a tiny little flathead screw with a locking um, nut on it where you can set the timing back and forth. With everything out of the way, the car can be started up and run up to operating temperature. Now the car is fully warmed up and I'll show you the first method. This is how to check the ignition timing on these early pre-HEs. You need to idle down, so grab a wrench and down here on the idle valve, idle the car down to about 500 RPM. So that's about right. A really low idle like that, about 500 RPM. So now I'm gonna grab the timing light, we'll go underneath and I'll show you how to check the timing on the pre-HE. So here we are underneath the car. You see the front pulley spinning right there and that plate there is the timing plate. You might be able to see a little red dot there. That's just a dollar red paint I put on there. That's the zero mark on that pulley. So I've taken my timing light and I've set it to zero, which is the correct timing at idle for this engine. Zero degrees before top dead center on a European pre-HE. So if you're sensitive to flashing lights, please look away now for maybe 30 seconds or so, because this, this light does flash a lot and I don't want anyone to get any trouble from it. So you aim your timing light up there at the pulley and try to catch this on camera so basically the red mark that i've put on there is the zero on the timing cover and the gray dot there the silver dot is the line on the pulley that i've also marked with a pen so you see they line up perfectly so that shows that the timing is 10 degrees before top dead center I can change this on the light, for instance, to 5, and you'll see how that line will move. So now you see it's not lined up correctly. And I will set this back to 10. And now they line up again. So the timing is set correctly at 10 degrees before top dead center. So that was how you set it on a pre-HE. Now if you have an HE, it's actually set at 3000 RPM, which is a little scary because you have to climb down underneath there with the engine roaring at 3000 RPM. It should be 18 degrees before top dead center at 3000 RPM, once again with the vacuum disconnected. You could either have a friend in the car, you know, holding the throttle open at something like 3000 RPM, or you could grab a screwdriver or some device and jam it in between here until you find something that is big enough to hold the throttle open at exactly 3000 RPM. And you set it underneath there, or you check it underneath the same way, but instead of it being 10, it should be 18. So now I'm gonna turn off the, the engine and I'll show you what you need to do if this number is not correct. If your timing is off, you set it with a screwdriver down here 
this moves the distributor back and forth with a little cog. Um, if you are unable to move this, you can loosen the lock nut up here and then move it. I find it's easiest to have this lock nut kind of semi-snug so that it doesn't move easily, but you can still move this by hand because once you've set it, it's really difficult to lock that lock nut off without changing the setting again. So just snug it off enough so that you can still move the distributor back and forth with this screw. You can't move it back and forth by hand like many traditional cars. You need to use a screwdriver on that screw. So if your ignition timing is incorrect, simply adjust it there until you get either 10 degrees before top dead center on a pre-HE at idle at 500 RPM, or if you have an HE at 3000 RPM, 18 degrees before top dead center. There are also different ways of tuning the pre-HE depending on if you have other emissions. So I will put a list of that down below. Once you're happy that everything is set, don't forget to connect the vacuum advance again before you go for a test drive. Well, that's it. That's how you check and set the ignition timing on these old V12s. I've shown you how to do it on the pre-HE with the Opus ignition system and how to do it on the HE with the Lucas ignition system. That Lucas system was used until 1988 on the XJS and all the way until 1992 on the XJ12. So it covers a lot of years. The XJS did have a system after this called Magneti Marinelli. I can show how that works in a future video because I have it on the XJS, but it's set up in a completely different way. But this was how you check those two. So remember 10 degrees before top dead center on a pre-HE at idle and or 500 RPM, so a low idle, and at 18 degrees before top dead center on a HE at 3000 RPM. Anyways, I'd like to take this time to thank all my subscribers. A few days ago, we reached 500, which is just amazing. I love reading all the comments and suggestions and questions, so please keep posting those. It takes a lot of time and effort to make these videos and I love seeing that you guys seem to enjoy to watch them as much as I enjoy making them. So I'm definitely going to make a lot more of these. Uh, speaking of that, I've actually created a Patreon page that if you want to, you can become a patron to the channel and help support the channel even more. This will give me opportunities to purchase more uh, gear to film it better, to get more camera angles and to get more things on the channel and get more videos. So if you want to become a Patreon, there's a link down below. You can click on that and check it all out and become one if you want. Uh, it's not something that I'm asking everyone to do or everyone to become, but if you feel like you want to support the channel a little bit more, you can do that down below in the link. So what's next? I'm going to continue the video series on how to tune the V12, so there'll be more videos on that. We'll take the distributor out and I'll show you how to go through that on the bench. There'll also be some more videos on the XJS. We'll also be going through the fuel system in the rear of the XJ12. So going through the fuel tanks and all that pipe work in the back. There will also be videos on the S-Type restoration, of course, starting shortly. So until next time, I'm Adam and this was Loom with a Classic. I'll see you soon.